welcome to About Face Theatre presents Five Questions With, and today's guest, Gina Gianfrido. Gina is a playwright and a two-time Pulitzer Prize finalist for her plays Rapture, Blister, Burn, and Becky Shaw. Her other plays include After Ashley, Can You Forgive Her, and U.S. Drag. Her work has been performed off-Broadway at theatres such as Playwrights Horizons, Second Stage, and The Vineyard, in London at the Hampstead and the Almeida, and at major American regional theatres, including the Huntington and the Humana Festival. Her many accolades include an Obie, uh, a Guggenheim Fellowship, the Susan Smith Blackburn Prize, and an Outer Critics Circle Award, among others. She also is a writer and producer of TV drama, working on shows such as Law and Order, uh, The Alienist, and FBI Most Wanted, among others. Gina, you're very welcome. Hi, nice to be here. Great, great to have you. So Gina, we'll dive right in. Um, the first question is just what uh, play or experience first got you into theater? Um, you know, I came of age in, in public schools in the 70s, um, you know, when there was, a, you know, there seemed to be a lot of money to do arts in the schools. I have a 10 year old, it's no longer the case, but um, <laughs> at all. But we had, um, we had a, a day where we went to an art center for half the day. And I took a class called um, writing for writing for the stage and I took writing for television and I, I took all of these writing classes and um, you know it was unusual I think to be given that opportunity in grade school and it, it, mm -hmm. it really um, it kind of whet my appetite to keep doing it. Mm. Right that's great and what, and what was your your first steps into professional theater? You know I um I came to college in New York and I had been acting in plays in high school and I thought I wanted to be an actress. And mm -hmm. um, I got, you know, an internship at an off-Broadway theater company. Um, and I kind of, once I sat in on some auditions, I, I kind of, that cooled my interest <laughs> in acting, you know, yeah. that and, um, I, I was taking an acting class at college at um, Columbia University, and uh, you would never be allowed to do this now, but the, uh, the acting teacher said, you know, I'm only going to let you uh, work on roles you'd really be asked to play. So he said, he told me, he said, you, you would be cast as an ethnic teenager. And so, I, so he had me, you know, reading like, you know, trying to find an ethnic teenager scene to work on. Um, so I did, you know, I could do Romeo and Juliet, I could do View from the Bridge, but not, not a whole lot else. But, um, and I think that plus the off-Broadway internship got me interested in writing my own material. Mm, great, good inspiration. Cool, okay, so Gina, so um, you're a writer of, of your own fantastic plays, but, but what's a great play that you love and why? You know, I, I really love, just about everything that Donald Margulies writes. Mm. Um, and two in particular are, are my favorites. One is um, Dinner with Friends and the other Collected Stories. Um, and I think, you know, Collected Stories is, is really of interest to me as a, a writer, um, you know, cause it's about a, 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 write, a young writer and her mentor and sort of the theft of the other person's life for use in writing. but. I think the more universally um, accessible one is Dinner with Friends, um, which is really, you know, was a very, very popular play in the US and it's two couples in middle age um, who are best friends. And then one of the men has an affair and the relationship falls apart. And then the other couple sort of, their relationship is kind of threatened by um, watching their, their friends split up. Mm. And I feel like, you know, people sort of, um, you know, there was a certain amount of making fun of it when it came out because it was like, oh, you know, affluent white people problems. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's, it's such a good play and what it's about is so universal. I think it's really about, you know, the terror of aging and death mm -hmm. and, you know, is monogamy over many, many, many years realistic? And yeah. I, I just, I find it so rich. I go back to it, you know, over and over again. 
Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. So can you tell us about a time in your theater life where things turned out differently than you expected them to? Yeah, I mean, I've had the, the surprises for me have mostly been with with audiences responding, you know, when uh, there have been times I, I anticipated an audience response and I was surprised. You know, mm -hmm. when we did Becky Shaw in Actors Theater of Louisville, um, you know, we were terribly concerned throughout that um, audiences were going to hate the character of Max. They were going to hate him. They were going to hate him because he's very caustic. He's very sarcastic. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we we got in front of audiences and absolutely the reverse was true. You know, they mm. they were crazy about him. The nice guy we thought they were going to rally behind. They 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 were kind of dismissive of they um, mm. they they had a hard time liking him and taking him seriously. But Max, they loved. Um, mm. So I think, you know. Uh, what I learned there, I think partly is that um, audiences will go with you uh, mm -hmm. with characters who aren't very nice if they're compelling and interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but the last play I had done off Broadway was a play called Can You Forgive Her? And that was um, a very difficult woman character mm -hmm. and um, audiences did not did not go with her. And that was um, that was that was an interesting one for me because I I kind of have been weighing it along with my experience with Max and trying to figure out kind of what what that was about. Um, I think part of it was that she was very very unpleasant, mm -hmm. um, and Max was not. He was very entertaining, mm -hmm. um, and I think to be with her and her unpleasantness for ninety minutes, people mm -hmm. resented, frankly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, a great discovery. Okay, so um, so Gina, you um, you also work extensively in television. Mm -hmm. So what is it that keeps you coming back to the theater? What moves you? What, what excites you about theater? Well, you know, I I think the answer that you know is sort of expected is that that there is some magic to the the live experience of people facing e each other in a room and it's an experience that's not going to be recreated i mean that that isn't kind of it for me so much because i um you know i i love you know i love cinema um i find the experience of film super satisfying i i feel like theater is for me um it, it kind of I find that it's a space where ideas that aren't marketable, commercial, you know, that that plot driven stuff that can't get done in film and television um, is gets gets done in theater. And I feel like it is a place where um, I see writers wrestling with stuff that I don't necessarily see in, in film and television. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and do you think that's due due to the form or due to um due to it being less less expensive to produce or what what do you think is the cause for that? You know, I feel like you know if you take a, a writer like Annie Baker, um, and I I really love her plays, but they're very long and not a not a lot happens, mm -hmm. but the sum total of the experience, um, it it, it really adds up to something. Um, very significant, mm. um, I find, and I, I, she just wouldn't be allowed to do it. Um, certainly not on television. I, I don't know on film. I, I think there is, you know, I remember the last time I saw, I saw one of Annie's plays, and I had been, you know, forewarned it was quite long, and I, you know, sneaked my cup of coffee in, and it was so delightful to be just live in that world for three hours, mm. um, and not, you know not not have to be kind of with a with a driving plot mm. yeah. yeah absolutely yeah ha huh. very good so throughout um you know your theatrical life have you you know are there any skills or, or tools that you've gained that you've found useful in the rest of your life yeah i i feel like um one of the the things i got from graduate school that was useful 
mm-hmm. was I learned how to behave in a rehearsal room. Mm-hmm. And partly what that's about um, is, I mean, part of it, I think, frankly, is learning um, to mask your um, displeasure when <laughs> you don't like something because, you know, you can really paralyze an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and you don't want to do that. Um, but it's, and it's also about, I find with the director, um, navigating power and, and, you know, for me, it's kind of like, I, I am most comfortable being, um, you know, in lockstep with the director. If I have a, if I don't think he's, if I don't like something he's doing, we talk about it outside the room. I don't think, you know, so I feel like there are, there are skills about how to behave in a productive way that I've taken into the workplace um, Mm. that have been useful. Cause writer, TV writers rooms, I mean, a lot of the same stuff applies. You know, someone will make a terrible, horrible pitch and you don't want, you don't want to show that you think that because you're working with this person. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I probably have trouble with that. Uh, well, Gina, this has been so great. Thank you so much. Um, as a bonus question, can you tell us anything about what you're working on at the moment? Yeah, I am working on a TV pilot um, in the um, you know crime suspense genre, um, and yeah, I mean, I'm really enjoying it. It's interesting. It was. Um, it was a book that was brought to me and I didn't really care for the book, but it, it gave me some ideas. And um, I went back with my ideas and, and um, they you know, bought my idea, but they very much want to hang on to what they call the, the IP, the intellectual property of the book. Cause it apparently it, it's very hard to sell anything that's completely original you know, buyers, buyers want kind of the insurance of somebody else already stamped approval on it. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of navigating that, that I'm kind of doing my own thing, but I also have this, um, this book that I have to, you know, work in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good challenge. <laughs> well, thank you so very, very much. Oh, well, thank you. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And thank you to you, our audience, for joining us. Um, if you enjoyed the interview, please like below and share because we believe theater makes life better. See you next time on About Face Theater presents five questions with. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and share. Thanks for watching. <laughs>